Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. Today's video is gonna be a pros and cons of MDI or multiple daily injections versus an insulin pump. You know I have done so many videos about insulin pumps since I transitioned to one just over a year, under a year ago. I've done reviews of the Tandem T Slim, which is the pump I'm on. I've shared my first impressions. But something that I really wanted to share was a comparison video between a pump and injections because when I was considering getting a pump it took me a really long time to take the plunge because I just didn't understand what living with a pump would be like versus living with doing multiple daily injections. I didn't really understand the full benefits of the pump and I also didn't understand just how inconvenient it would or wouldn't be seeing as it's something that's constantly attached to you. So I'm hoping that this video will answer some of those questions for you if you're unsure about whether you should get an insulin pump or what the best option is for you, an insulin pump or multiple daily injections. Now there are so, so, so many things you could say about both of these methods. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my five top pros of each, which will also then kind of with each pro of one, there's a counter con of the other. So that's kind of like implied. So we'll kick off with the pump and the five top pros. And my number one pro of a pump is that you can be so much more reactive. In my pump, I have customized profiles based on different types of day. So I have a training day profile, a rest day profile, a period profile, a profile for when I'm stressed. And as soon as my day changes into a different type of day, I can flip that switch, put that profile on, and I'm good to go. I'm not stuck on one flat basal rate for the entire day. I can change what I'm doing at any point in the day and adjust my insulin to closely match what my body is going through that day, which is so important because we're not machines and we fluctuate at various times of the month, of the year, of the day. It's really important to be reactive with things like switching to a different profile or for example, using a temporary basal rate, if you're gonna be doing some activity that you hadn't been expecting, you haven't considered it with your last bolus. If you then go, if you say you have lunch, you've done your bolus, you then decide you're gonna go for a walk and that's gonna send you low, you can just put on a temporary basal rate for a specific period of time and hope that, that can help prevent that hypo. So you don't have to mold your, di your day around your diabetes, you can mold your diabetes around your day. The second top pro for me for the pump is just how precise and accurate you can be because the dosing is so precise. You can get yourself as close as possible to 5.5 or whatever your target blood sugar is at every point of the day because both the bolus and the basal can be delivered in such small increments so on my pump i can do a bolus a, yeah a bolus up to 0 0.001 of a unit and my basal can be adjusted up to 0 0.01 so that is so 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 precise considering the most um kind of small you can get on a pen is half a unit which is amazing because your basal can really closely match what your body would be doing if you weren't diabetic and with your boluses if you're someone who's very sensitive to insulin, a small amount can make a real difference and it can really be the difference between a hypo, a high blood sugar, or being in target. Um, so just the accuracy of it is amazing. The third thing that I adore about being on an insulin pump is an extended bolus. So pizza effect is no longer a problem. And if you don't know what that is, foods that tend to be very high fat, also really high protein foods, um, can be very slow to digest and release the carbs very slowly. And also protein and fat can also turn into glucose, um, depending on the macro profile of our food and therefore affect our blood sugars. So things like pizza takeaways, they can digest over a really long period of time and it means you have to split up your insulin dose so that you don't have it. If you had all of your insulin up front for a piece of pizza, you would then plummet, go really low straight after and then skyrocket for hours afterwards. So you need to be able to deliver that insulin at the time that the carbs are going to be hitting your system. And with a pump, it's so much easier because you can do something called an extended bolus where you have your total do uh, dose that you wanna take you dedicate a percentage of it to take up front as your pre-bolus or when you're going to eat and the rest of it you can then set a time frame that you want that bolus to be delivered 
over that period of time. So for example, say I'm gonna be having 15 units and I'm gonna have a whole Domino's, right? I could have seven units before I start eating and those other seven units I could spread over eight, 10, four, three hours, depending on how your own body digests. Obviously this is possible with injections, but it just means you have to constantly inject. And I found that if I had something like a pizza or a takeaway, I would have to set alarms to wake up in the middle of the night to inject at the right time because I would still be just digesting at three, four, five, six o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's very inconvenient where the pump just makes it super, super simple and I can enjoy pizza and takeaways even more now. Fourth great thing about insulin pumps is just simply the fact that you don't have to inject literally every time that you eat or need a correction. My pump is always connected to me. It's in my pocket and it makes it really good for things like if you're on the go, um, you don't have to set yourself aside, try and do an injection like in the middle of the street or something. When I'm like walking to the gym or just walking around, I can just pull out my um, pump from my pocket put in whatever correction or dose I wanna have, or if I've like grabbed a sandwich on the go um, and I can do my pre-bolus while I'm walking, um, eat my sandwich whenever I'm ready and it's just there and it's so easy. And also if you're someone who finds injections painful, when you do an infusion site, you have to do it every one or two days. So doing one injection, every, sorry, a new infusion site every two to three days. So doing one injection every two or three days versus several a day can be a real bonus. The last um, really, I would just say convenient thing about an insulin pump is that all of your data and all of your information is stored on your pump so you don't have to remember anything anymore. You don't have to remember your carb ratio, your correction factor, your basal doses. It's all in the pump and then you just plug in the numbers and go and obviously you should try and remember these things if your pump ever fails um, and it's just good to have an understanding of the kind of insulin that you're taking but you don't have to constantly remember it and constantly do your own calculations especially for things like insulin on board where it can be very difficult to calculate how much of your last dose is still running through your system if you're then bolusing again so like an hour later it's really hard to calculate that as a human head um, but a pump will have all the data stored and will automatically factor in your insulin on board to your next dose so just not having to actually think as much and do as much maths um, is a really great thing about being on an insulin pump moving on to multiple daily injections and the pros of those because there definitely are plenty of things that are more beneficial about um, injecting versus a pump and the first thing that I would say is a pro of MDI is that you're not constantly attached to something. Um, even though it's less of a burden than I thought it would be moving over to the insulin pump, it is still a burden being constantly attached. Whether you have a patch pump or a tube pump, both ones add an aspect or an element of complexity to our lives. So with a patch pump, even though it's stuck onto you, you don't have to think about where you're gonna wear it or store it, um, they can be quite bulky and they can get in the way of outfits. They can also be quite uncomfortable. You have to be quite careful about where you put them so that it's not covering um, too large of an area, um, like over a skin fold, if that makes sense. So if you have it on your stomach, over where your natural waist bend downs, bends down, um, it can then just make the pump fall off if you're constantly um, irritating that site. And also if you're someone who's really sensitive to adhesives, um, it's a big area of skin that's gonna be covered by an adhesive, so it can be quite irritating. So on the other point, you have tube pumps. Well, the actual infusion site themselves is a lot smaller and can actually be a lot more um, convenient for certain types of outfits. Um, you then also still have to consider where are you gonna wear this? Where are you gonna have this on your outfit? Um, because obviously you can't just carry this in your hand 24 um, seven. So thinking about that is can sometimes be an issue. With most outfits, there's a workaround. If you're wearing a top and bottoms, you can always put it into your waistband. Um, if you're wearing something like a dress, you have to consider that jumpsuits can be really tricky because not only do you have to think about where you're going to wear it for that period of time you also have to think about okay what if i want to bolus can i access the pump to take it out to do a bolus um so for example if you're at a restaurant and you're wearing a jumpsuit that can be tricky because say your infusion site's on your stomach um and you've put on a like garter around your leg to store your pump in the meantime if you then want to go and bolus you can't access underneath your jumpsuit to your leg to do that bolus so you're going to have to go to the loo to do it so you have to think about not only where can you 
fit it? Where is it gonna kind of stay in place? But also is that place um, of your outfit accessible? So it is a lot to consider and it can also be tricky for things like getting changed or if you're going to the toilet, you have to think about where you're gonna put the pump in the meantime. A lot of people will just disconnect and I've started doing that more. I've just started disconnecting my pump when I'm going to the loo or getting changed because otherwise it's just like you're constantly carrying it around different places or you get different bits of clothing out to put on um, and it's easier to just disconnect it but there's just those things I never used to have to think about on MDI. The second pro of um, injecting is that you don't have a risk of a bad infusion site. If you've seen any of my videos while I was on the Roche Solo, I had so many problems with infusion sites. Not only is this just bad for your diabetes management when you're not getting the correct insulin, it can also leave you feeling really ill and can also put you at a huge risk of DKA, which can be deadly if not treated. Obviously, most of the time, you're gonna be catching a bad um, site before that happens. You're not gonna go into DKA and you're hopefully not gonna die. Um, but there, there is that risk if you don't catch it. 99.9% um, .9 of the time you're gonna catch that. But it is, it can be very draining, especially if you're on a pump like the Solo that for me was just completely faulty. I was having so many bad sides. It was really bad for my mental health. I got to the point where I didn't wanna leave my home because I was so scared that while I was out, I would have a bad sight and it would wreak havoc with my blood sugars and it would ruin my day. Um, so you do have to consider that. However, now I'm on a reliable pump, I'm on the T-Slim, and um, this rarely, rarely happens. And so it doesn't actually get in the way of my day to day, but it is still a possibility that you could have a bad sight, which can lead to a bad blood sugar day, which is never good for our mental health anyway. Whereas with injections, there's no chance of that. You know the insulin that you inject is going into your system and it's gonna get working. A third pro of um, injections is that you don't have to bother with the time consuming and also very wasteful site changes. Um, if you've seen my review on the T-Slim, you'll know that I absolutely adore this pump, but the site changes do produce a lot of waste. And they also can take like 10 to 15 or even 20 minutes if you're a nervous site changer like I am. Um, so it is a bit inconvenient. It's definitely not the end of the world. It's only every two to three days. So it's, God, dropping my pump. Um, very manageable, very doable, easy to work into your routine. Um, but if you forget you've got a site change or something and then that, that you can set alarms to remind you to do your site change. But if you forget and then that alarm goes off and it's not a convenient time, it can be a bit frustrating sometimes. For me, it's well worth it. Those site changes are no problem, um, but not having to do them on injections was quite nice. The fourth great thing about injections is kind of linked to the last one. Like I said, there's far fewer waste. And I mean, both, yes, plastic waste and that kind of thing that I was complaining about with the T-Slim in terms of all of the infusion sites come wrapped in plastic. The, me the mechanisms can be quite bulky. The sharps that they produce are large sharps. So you have to then order a, like a bigger sharps box but also quite a lot of insulin waste. It takes me about 12 to 13 units to fill the tubing of my um, T-Slim. And also when you're filling up the reservoir and trying to get rid of bubbles and things like that, um, there can be quite a lot of insulin waste. Um, so that is just something to bear in mind. It is quite a wasteful process being on an insulin pump. It's not huge and there are definitely things you can do to minimise the insulin waste, but there's nothing you can do about the plastic waste because that's just how it's packaged and provided. And the last um, pro I would say of being on injections rather than an insulin pump is simply the complication and simplicity, and those are completely opposite words, the complications of some day-to-day -day things being on an insulin pump you don't have to think about with MDI. So when you're going traveling or you're going out for the day, you don't have to consider like taking spare infusion sites and things in case they fail. Um, you don't have to worry about ordering new things on your prescription and when you get an insulin pump as opposed to injections you also have to then also order your pump consumables which i didn't realize don't actually get added onto your prescription here in england those pump consumables will be delivered direct from the manufacturer and you have to contact them to arrange delivery of those separately so you have another person you have to phone out phone up about supplies there's also like more things that could, there's more moving parts that you could run out of um, and it can be annoying with your prescriptions. So now that I don't 
use MDI in my day to day life. I obviously go through far fewer needles and things like that. Um, even though my diabetes nurse, when I moved on to insulin pump, wrote to my GP to say I still need these things on my prescription because I need them in case of emergency or if I'm ever having a insulin pump break. Um, I went to order them the other day and they've been taken off my prescription because I've left it too long between orders of them. They think I don't need them anymore. So it's just things like that that you have to stay on top of your prescription a lot more and you also have to stay on top of phoning the manufacturer um, to keep ordering your pump consumables. So those are my five pros of insulin pump versus MDI. You might be thinking there's a huge elephant in the room in that probably one of the biggest pros of an insulin pump is doing looping where you connect an insulin pump to a CGM and it can um, act like a closed loop system and react to each other. Um, the reason I haven't mentioned this is because it's simply not accessible to me right now. The Tandem T-Slim can be paired with the Dexcom G6 to create that system. It's called Basal IQ or Control IQ. Um, however, I don't have access to the Dexcom. I'm not eligible for it on prescription yet, although hopefully this may be changing soon. And I also can't afford um, to buy it myself because I live in London and everything is extraordinarily expensive. Um, so looping isn't an option for me right now and that's why I haven't discussed it here, but obviously for a lot of people that is the number one pro of an insulin pump. But I would love to hear your pros and cons of pumps versus injections. I know some people feel very strongly about one versus the other. I completely think it's up to your personal preference and what your body responds to best and what fits best into your lifestyle and your routine. Um, but yeah, please share anything that I've missed down below. But that is it for now and I will see you in the next video. Bye!